Hi, Henrik and Karis here in Bangkok. How did you like our intro? Our lives are not at all that glamorous. <laughs> so when we were looking for apartments here in Bangkok, we actually found that almost all apartments will come with a swimming pool and quite a lot will come with a gym. Yeah, so a bit of a different video this week. It's going to be more of our lifestyle here in Bangkok. Um, take you on a tour of our apartment and just share how much things cost with you, like our rent, um, bills and just other expenses. We'll also go for a walkthrough of the area that we've chosen to live in. It's called Tong Lo. Um, it's so central. It's very close to the BTS, which is the Sky Train, and lots of other amenities. Yeah, so the um, building block that we're living in is called 55th Tower. Uh, it's actually one of the older developments in the area. Um, but the reason we chose it over some of the newer condos is just the added space, the lower rents. Um, in the newer condos you get crazy things like golf simulators and super fancy gyms that um, yeah, we just don't need so uh, we prefer to have the extra space for our free crazy cats. <laughs> yeah so we have 200 square meters here, um, we have three bedrooms and two bathrooms, we also have a separate kitchen which has an oven and in itself that's actually quite rare here. Uh, yeah, I mean lots of locals they live in tiny little studios, they don't have kitchens at all so you end up just cooking on a hot plate on a floor so um, these apartments are very much designed for westerners to live in. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> um, we actually paid 40,000 baht per month for our apartment which is about a thousand pounds. We got quite a big reduction though because of Covid. Our other main bills are things like electricity, that comes in at three to four thousand baht every month. Uh, we have our phone and internet, so that's about another 800 baht every month. Uh, and then lastly, and very cheaply, is our water bill, which never comes in over 160 baht. Um, in fact, for the electricity and water, um, they're both provided by the government here, so you don't even have to set anything up, they just start billing you the moment you use it. Yeah, and once you get your bill, there'll be a QR code on it, and if you've got your banking app set up, you can scan it and do it in seconds. Well, I think that's all the basics, let's uh, show you around the apartment. Okay, so the grand tour commences into the most important part of the flat, the TV. And if we look over to the left, there's balcony area number one. And over on this side, let's pop out and show you the outdoors. So we've got this really nice little green area where we can sit out and have a coffee in the mornings. And that's our view. See the wire mesh in front of it, that's to stop the cats from killing themselves. As we tip down and show you the pool. That's just a five floor drop straight in. I reckon you could make that. So, back inside. And we've got 200 square meters of space as mentioned and uh, yeah, if you compare that against modern apartment blocks, you might actually only get about 80 square meters for the same price as we pay for this. Uh, and in fact, I've even seen studio flats of about 40 square meters for even more than we pay for this place. So it really shows you the, uh, the advantages of considering these older blocks. As I just point back around this way at a very important piece of kit, and that's the air conditioning unit which there are five of in this flat. Uh, important not just because it's so hot, but also for pollution. Uh, the farmers in the north of Thailand burn their crops pretty regularly, and we get the smog uh, much further down south than Bangkok. So the filters in the aircon units help to clean that. And we also have two of these things, which are air purifiers. And we run those, especially during dry season, when the air quality can get quite bad. So let's go through to the kitchen and here's the uh, the oven that we searched high and low for and uh, since I'm pointing at the sink it's worth talking about water hot water because uh, we discovered you don't get that plumbed in as standard here in Thailand so uh, in our bathrooms we have electric heaters underneath the sinks and the bath that um, heat up the water but in the kitchen there isn't one so no hot water in the kitchen as we spin round 
and walk into our little utility area. And worth mentioning through here, because this is a spot where actually you get some wildlife bugs and things enter your apartment, um, that condos like ours will send people round once every month and they spray for the, uh, the bugs, get rid of those giant cockroaches. That's our washing machine, tumble dryer. And oh, in here, this is worth pointing out. It's a water cooler. And that's something that you will have to invest in because the water's just not drinkable in Thailand. So we um, leave these bottles out beginning of every week. We use a company called Sprinkle and uh, they change our empties for fulls and we have nice clean drinking water. And since we're talking about water, it's worth mentioning that <laughs> it's been dry season recently and uh, lots of seawaters started to enter the drinking water system. So we've had, sorry, well, the tap water system. So we've had salty water coming out of our taps and showers. And this is spare bedroom number one. Obviously has had very little use since we moved out here, but uh, we hear that Things are due to change, the country's due to open back up with reduced quarantine leading to no quarantine if you're already vaccinated. So yeah, if you're out in Thailand or planning on coming out, come say hello. Well, only if you know us. If you don't, it'll be a bit weird. So uh, let's keep going through our second bathroom that we never use. Oh, I can hear a cat meowing at me. Cat saying hello to me, I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, I'll give you some attention later. I'm doing a tour of the house. So this is spare bedroom number two. Again, equally unused, but uh, you can see that we are spoilt for space here. I mean, comparing against somewhere like London where I've lived, we pay a thousand pounds here for a very trendy sort of central area of Bangkok. Um, I mean, I could only think in London we'd be paying three, four, five times as much for this. So it really shows you what good value Bangkok is. Okay, and last stop on our tour is the master bedroom, complete with this very nice sitting area and cat. And you can see we've got lots of built-in storage which is very handy. And as we pan around, what else have we got? There's a, a Keris having a read on the bed. Hello. So, last thing that we'll show you is the master bathroom, which uh, as you can see, it's a bit dated, but I think Compared to these newer apartments, I would take this any day of the week for all the added space that we have here. But yeah, overall, I think we're pretty happy living here. What do you think, Keris? Happy here? Yes, very happy. Okay, great. Well, let's leave Keris to a book and uh, we'll show you outside. building down onto Tonglaw Road and for uh, those of you who haven't lived in Thailand or don't know how the street system works out here um, basically we're just off of Sukhumvit Road which is the massive road that runs all the way through Bangkok and the roads off the sides of it are numbered so evens on one side odds on the other and we live on Sukhumvit 55 which is Soi Tonglaw um, that is the centre of Tonglaw. Super busy and noisy. It's the first time I'm actually trying filming like this, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. 
Um, yeah, I've turned right out of our apartment. If we went left, we'd have a short five minute walk down to the BTS. And that's really useful having that so close by because it means you can get around Bangkok really easily when the traffic's bad and especially when it's rainy the traffic does come to a standstill so having the BTS on your doorstep's really a very good option. So we're just wandering down and uh, I think the plan is I'm going to walk from one end of Tonglaw Road to the other. The area of um, Tonglaw actually extends a few roads um, to the side of us and it extends on both sides of Sukhumvit Road um, but I'd say this is the centre of Tonglaw and uh, all roads on this side so the odd number roads tend to be the ones where you have more of a mix of things so you get more shops and restaurants and cafes uh, the ones on the other side of the road tend to just be all residential so that's where you just get your building blocks but for today we'll just show you our road Soi Tong Law and I think that's plenty because it's a big long road with a lot to see so just uh, literally two or three minutes up from our apartment and we've got our first opportunity to do shopping so this is top supermarket just over the other side and uh, it's not the biggest supermarket but basically if you want to do a quick shop get some nice things and that's just minutes away from where we live and uh, we'll pass some other shopping options along the way there's a the old English pub as well for any people from the UK missing a, a taste of home it's not very English <laughs> So these little side alleys, you mentioned the way the road system works out here, you have the main roads like Sukhumvit and then all the roads off the side of it. Number Sukhumvit 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. And then the alleys that run off of these roads are also numbered so you've got alley 1, alley 3, alley 5 on one side and alley 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on on the other. So it's a really easy way of uh, navigating around Bangkok using that number system. And uh, Tonglor itself is um, quite a Japanese sort of area. So you'll see there's lots and lots of Japanese restaurants and bars. In fact, the moment I say that, I can point you to a few places just here. And uh, yeah, it's a very popular area for Japanese to settle. And it's nice for us because we love Japanese food, so we just pop out for a bowl of ramen in the evening. So you can see on the other side of the road, you've got everything here. So you've got all your nail salons and little spas and hairdressers. So there's uh, plenty of restaurants and bars all along here. If you like your nightlife. Um, the restaurants have stayed open during this second wave of the COVID. They just weren't allowed to serve alcohol up until recently. And the bars, I believe, are still shut right now. So, no going out for a night on the lash. As we pass one of many, many Japanese eateries. And I'd say the things you have most of along this road are probably Japanese restaurants, massage parlors, huge abundance. Is that real? Hey. to uh, point out the ubiquitous street food places and we mentioned earlier when we were chatting about the apartment that lots of places out here don't have kitchens and that's not just 
like the small flats it's you know even big houses are built without kitchens out here um, because street food is so cheap and so common that lots of people just buy their food in all the time which is why western flats are, are a little bit differently designed point out uh, up here is the Grand Centre Circumvet, Grand Centre Point. That's where we spent our quarantine time, two weeks, locked up in there. There you go. As I said, street food places are just everywhere because this is how people dine out here. Oh, and uh, the very ubiquitous 7-Elevens, which you get all over Thailand. And they're great for when it gets too hot. If you need a bit of air conditioning, just jump into a 7-Eleven. traffic is pretty busy and uh, you get the um, motorbike taxis all along this road you can see lots of them driving past here comes one now the lady on the back and that's pretty much the quickest way of getting around Bangkok you just grab one of those bikes and they'll get you where you need to go pretty quickly Yeah, more street food. Way up Soi Tong Law. I'll make a little diversion off to the side here. This is quite a cute little area where you've got all these little restaurants and cafes. And what's also up here is a bigger supermarket, and it's another chain called Villa, or Via, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to pronounce it, um, but uh, they normally have a, a really good selection, they're a bit more sort of artisanal, um, not as cheap as some other places you can shop, but this is probably our closest big supermarket. There's another big chain here called Big C, and um, we have one of those, like a 10 minute taxi ride away. So. Uh, if you want to do shopping a bit cheaper, pop over to Big C. But uh, if you want more of a selection, then you come to this one with some nice mood music playing. It's good for your walk. So we uh, we came shopping here at Halloween time. There it is, the uh, supermarket, and. Uh, we decided that we wanted to <laughs> carve a pumpkin for Halloween. And uh, the pumpkins here uh, are tiny little green things. We came to Villa and uh, lo and behold, they had these lovely big orange pumpkins. So we bought one of those 
and it was quite early in our stay here. We hadn't been living here that long, so we weren't really paying attention much to uh, exchange rates and things. But it was only when we got home that I realised that um, I'd paid £100 for a pumpkin. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought it was a mistake, so I called up the supermarket, but they explained to me that they were specially imported from France. So, um, not only the most expensive pumpkin I've ever bought, but probably the most expensive uh, anything I've ever bought at the supermarket. £100 pumpkin. So, uh, walked back onto the main road and just crossed over the other side from where the supermarket and those little cafes are, just to show you this little area. It's the uh, House of Beers, very good beer selection. And uh, there's a few little bars and restaurants all in this little bit. And if you fancy going out of an evening, this is a really nice spot to, to perch up. Mellow music hall restaurant and uh, yeah you certainly will never run out of places to go for a meal or drink if you're living here so the further up the road we go and we're almost at the end of it now the um, more residential it gets so definitely the restaurants and bars been out once you get up to this side and uh, what you do see a lot of as you walk along are the, the taxis. There's just hundreds and hundreds of them. If you ever want to get anywhere, just walk out onto the road and you'll get a taxi in seconds. Um, what you don't see so much of at the moment is the tuk-tuks. And that's because really they're aimed at tourists. So I think tuk-tuk drivers, I mean, you do see them, but I think they're struggling at the moment because they are notorious for jacking the prices up. So locals then tend to like to use them and to be honest, taxis are much more comfortable than air conditioned, so unless you're looking for an experience, there's not really much need to jump into a tuk-tuk. So, I'm gonna walk all the way up to the top and uh, just literally to show you where you can pick up the boat because we have a, uh, a boat stop on the clock at the top of this road so we'll show you that and, uh, and we'll call it a day it's been quite a long video today I haven't made one this long before but uh, just walking up this road takes 20 odd minutes but I'm thinking <laughs> I won't post all of that I'll cut it down for you guys so you don't get too bored here we're at the top of the road and what I wanted to show you was the point where you can pick up the boat. So we're at the Klong. There's a little, little market going on today here. Looks like a little Thai version of a car boot sale. And I think there's a boat coming. So yeah, this is um, this is a very common way to to get around the city for the locals. So you got the sky train, um, which from a westerner's point of view, the sky train is actually quite cheap, but um, for locals, especially when you think the minimum wage here is 400 baht a day, the um, BTS can be a bit expensive. So um, the boat is certainly a lot cheaper and uh, you can get around just as easily, but it is very noisy when you're on board. <laughs> the engines on those things. I mean, they, they go fast, but yeah, you're not gonna have a conversation easily on one of those. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed our little walk around. Uh, I think we've shown you Tonglaw pretty well. Maybe next time we'll show you one of the other neighborhoods, but uh, till then, see you later.